In this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up a serial bus. And for the serial buses, there's clearly a number of different protocols that we cover. Um, for the most part, they're going to be a similar setup. So in this one, I am using a UART bus, um, essentially just a, uh, a, a receive part of a UART bus that we're going to look at. And so to set this up, basically what you do is you go ahead and scale the packet or the frame on the uh, display and we'll rescale here in a little bit, but I think this makes it a little bit easier to get started. And then you go into this protocol button. And within the protocol button, there's a couple different options. So uh, when we look at the buses, you can have up to two buses running at once. And this is powerful if you're looking at something that might have I squared C and UART in it or CAN and LIN, that type of thing. Um, then you're going to tell it what kind of bus type it is. And so as I mentioned, we're going to do UART. So I'll go ahead and select UART there. Um, we'll go ahead and turn the decode on. But one of the things you're going to notice is, is that it's not really decoding properly yet. And um, so we have to tell it what uh, what the decode configuration should be. And that's where we come in underneath configuration here. And one of the first things and one of the most important things that people often overlook is the threshold. And you might know the threshold that you want. Um, we do have the ability to find the threshold and it does a pretty darn good job of finding the threshold. So I usually start with that and then kind of eyeball it. And I know it should be right around 1.5 volts, so I feel pretty good with that um, threshold. When we look at this UART bus, I know that the parity is none, stop bit is one. Um, my bit rate, so you can do a user defined bit rate or a predefined one. Um, the bit rate on this one is 115.2, so we'll go ahead and select 115.2. Um, and if you take a look in terms of uh, data bits and those types of things, um, you can adjust that as well. I know that we have uh, eight bits for uh, a data size. Um, all right, now we've set up the configuration. There's a couple things that we can do now. One of which is we can, and you'll notice that it's decoding much better now. Um, we can adjust the trigger. And so when you come into the trigger, you have a bunch of different options that are specific to the protocol that you're working on. And so in this one, I'm just gonna leave it at a start bit. But if you wanted to trigger on a frame start or if you wanted to trigger on different errors, whatever it might be, you can define that all inside of here. Um, if we go back, then we're gonna change how it's displayed. And um, right now it's displaying in hexadecimal. Um, I want it to go ahead and display in ASCII because we're actually outputting something that says tune to a certain frequency. And in this case, it hops between 815 megahertz and 835 megahertz. Um, you can also turn on or off this little thing that's called bits. And I think this is a pretty powerful debug tool. So bits is this little um, digital representation, a one or a zero of essentially what the decoder is seeing. And so this makes it really easy um, to be able to tell, uh, you know, is a decoder seeing what I think it should be seeing? And if it's not, then maybe I need to adjust something like my threshold or, or something along those lines. As we come back in, so there's a few more options, one of which is the bus table. Um, so the bus table is a, a nice setup where we'll go ahead and turn that on and it'll basically put, gives you kind of a 50,000 foot view of all the packets. Now, right now we only have one packet and so, or one frame. And so there's only gonna be one frame that's shown here. And you notice that you can control the size of the bus table, et cetera. Um, if I want, I can come in and we can change the time base where we put um, a fair amount more time on the time base and we get a number of packets coming in. And so um, now I'm at, one second might be a little too long. Let's go to 200 milliseconds and let's see how many packets we get. There we go. So we have a number of packets. And while this is difficult to actually see the information happening below, now you can see the packets inside of the table itself and you can scroll through the, there. You can download those um, or save them off. Um, makes it very powerful from that perspective. And then finally, if we come back in, um, the last thing that you can do is this label. And um, the label, you can adjust it. There's predefined ones. Um, if you look, we already had a label on this one. It said, um, or maybe I didn't have it turned on, but it would say UART over here on the side if we had the label turned on. And so you could adjust that to be whatever you would like it to be.